Hi, I am Rachel Romeliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly, and I am here with Rob Pike. He works at Google. He is an author of multiple books, and he is one of the co-creators of Go Programming Language. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Hi, Rachel. I'll dive right in. What's important about Go? What's important about Go? Um, I work at Google, and we build a lot of big programs, big server software that runs on massive clusters. And uh, the languages that we've been building those in, typically C++ and, and Java, mm -hmm. don't give us the kind of fluidity and ease of construction that we would like. Mm -hmm. And so a few years ago, uh, Ken Thompson, Robert Greaser, and I started talking about trying to build a new programming language that would actually be really good for the kinds of problems that we face at Google, which mm -hmm. means large programs, uh, I efficiency, lots of users uh, working on, lots of programmers working on the code, sure. uh, active development, uh, good tooling. There's a lot of sort of issues that are not well addressed by the existing languages, and okay. that's why we decided to do it. Seriously? That's, those are good reasons, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so a tremendous amount of programming takes place in languages that are either interpreted or run on virtual machines. Why do we need another language that compiles to machine code? Well, there aren't that many anymore that people use that do compile to machine code. There's the special purpose languages like numeric computation, Fortran, and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. for server software, you pretty much got C or C++ and not much else. You've mm -hmm. got Java, which compiles to a JIT. Um, but there just hasn't been a new, good, compiled language that's taken off for many years now. Why do you think it hasn't taken, something like that hasn't taken off? I think because the existing languages are have been good enough until now, okay. but there's been big changes in the computing environment in the last decade, say. Mm -hmm. A lot more networking, a lot cluster computing, or cloud as it's called today, mm -hmm. big data, as it's, you know, all these new right. buzzwords, right? right? Um, and the languages that, that I mentioned, in particular, mm -hmm. are all old. They're at least 10 right. years old, 20 years old. I mean, yeah. C++'s roots go back 30 odd years. And so there's a lot of properties of the modern computing environment mm -hmm. that these languages just don't address directly. That, yeah. And so having a, a, a modern language that works really well in the modern computing environment is actually important, but you want it to be efficient because you're going to be running these on you know, maybe thousands or tens of thousands of machines. Right. You don't want to waste resources by having an inefficient interpreter or some of the problems that come up with a virtual machine implementation. Mm -hmm. So we just naturally built a compiled language. Right. And we know enough now to be able to write compilers that are fast. You can actually compile and run a Go program faster than some interpreters can even start. Really? So, yeah, absolutely. It's wow. very fast. Typical build times for a Go binaries are well under a second. Wow. And was that something you had set out to do to make it so fast, or is that something that happened along I, the way? I wouldn't say it was an absolute goal, but we did believe that it was possible to do this. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, I mean, there's a joke, there's some truth to it, but the joke that we decided to do Go while we were waiting for a large server build um, but, and nowadays, I mean, as I said, typical com Go programs build in a second or two at wow. most. And, you know, in the big server world, binary builds usually take, you know, minutes, if not hours. Wow. So that's a very big difference. Right. That is great. Um, so what's different and important about Go's model for building uh, distributed systems? Okay. Well, that's... Yeah, perfect segue, yeah. right? Now, how do you go from hours to, to, to seconds? Right. And the reason is that the uh, dependency management for large mm -hmm. programs is really key to making things build quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly compared to C or C++ where you include files, um, a, a totally source-driven import mechanism like that tends to encourage a lot of multiple imports of the same files over and over and over again. Okay. And there's no clean dependency hierarchy. The only way to find out whether an include file is needed in a program is to take it out and see if it still compiles. And chances are it might because it's included somewhere else. Right. So it's just a big mess. And over time, these extraneous include files accumulate mm -hmm. so that there can be a fantastic amount of recompilation involved. And we've seen tens of thousands of times the same header file being passed through the compiler to build a single binary. And wow. that's crazy. And Go just has this very clean, very simple dependency model built into the language mm -hmm. so that not only do you only compile everything once, but when you're compiling something that depends on it, mm -hmm. the import operation is extremely efficient. Hmm. And so it can be literally you know, exponentially less work wow. for the compiler to build a program than it is for a, a large C or C++ program. So wow. that's where it comes from. That's, yeah. where, that's really where that's the speed great. is. 
So what do you see in the near future for the, the Go program language? Well, in the near past, we just announced Go One, which was our first stable right. release. Up until then, as an open source project, and, and Go has been open source for years now, mm -hmm. um, it's very sort of active, there's a very active community, things keep changing, and some people found it difficult to keep up, and companies were sort of hazarded against using sure. it because of the churn. So uh, earlier this year, we released a, a stable version called Go Version 1, or just mm -hmm. Go One, which has a uh, specification that's locked down, APIs that are locked down, and we have a, uh, you know, within reason, a guarantee that your Go One source code will continue to compile for, for years. Mm. And so we're going to use that, learn what else we might want to do differently in a future release, right. and sometime way down the road, years away, we might do a Go Two. Right. But for now, we've got this really, really nice language, very productive, very fast to work in, and we want to use it right. rather than just build it. So cool. that's where we are. That's fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for asking me. I enjoyed it.